Citroen's third generation C3 Super Mini gets a wash and brush up here with a slightly smarter look, comfier seats and extra personalisation options. It is still one of the most comfort orientated small cars you can buy too. Ultimately, there's nothing really revolutionary on offer here, but as a complete and highly personalisable package, it is desirably different. Citroen knows a thing or two about small family cars, especially those with a dash or two of character. It's got a bit of heritage to live up to. Here, after all, is the mark that over 60 years ago brought us the iconic 2CV, a model which established its maker as an innovator, an embracer of technology, and a brand in tune with the fickle finger of fashion. More recent products have struggled to live up to that lineage, but this one, this third generation C3 Super Mini has proved to be a little more charismatic than its two rather forgettable predecessors, the Mark 1 C3 of 2002 and the Mark 2 version of 2009. And Citroen has duly been rewarded with over 750,000 orders which have positioned this car fifth in the European Super Mini segment and have boosted overall C3 sales to over 4.5 million. Which is, to some extent, surprising, given that both under the skin and under the bonnet, much of the engineering of this car is over a decade old. Now, it may share power plants with the latest versions of its PSA Group Super Mini Cousins, the Peugeot 208 and the Vauxhall Corsa, but it lacks their sophisticated CMP platform. This third-generation C3 model persists with an ancient PF1 chassis dating back to its Mark II predecessor. That's also why a C3 still can't be ordered with any kind of engine electrification. All that is coming in this car's next generation. It can't be had either with the very latest and most sophisticated camera and radar safety tech for the same reason. Citroen, though, has realised that a lack of engineering sophistication needn't hold this car back. It sells to a younger audience on the back of other virtues. A cheeky look with trendy air bumps at the side, a soft ride and an affordable price. And to these attributes, this revised model adds visual tweaks, far greater scope for personalisation, a wider range of connected media features and the option of cosseting advanced comfort seats. Would it all be enough, though, to keep this very Gallic contender class competitive? Let's find out. Citroen hasn't made any changes to the engines, the ride or the handling of this third generation C3 as part of its mid-term package of updates, so it remains just as it was. And just as it was is just as different as before if you're comparing it to the Super Mini norm. Comfort is the defining factor here, not the kind of perceived sportiness that so many other Super Mini makers seem to think typical customers in this segment will want. It's amazing how one driving trait can become so closely linked with a particular make of car. Now with Citroen, that defining character is ride quality, the suppleness that lets this vehicles glide over bumps and bad roads with a silky smoothness that rivals often can't match. For this third generation C3, the French company re-embraced that idea and coined a phrase to describe it, Citroen Advanced Comfort. To be honest, there's nothing that advanced on offer here. This car's old tech PF1 platform dates back to the old Mark II generation C3 of 2009, and its continued use here is the reason why this car still can't offer the electrified engines that you'll find on most rivals, and with this model's Peugeot 208 and Vauxhall Corsa Cousins. They use the group's CMP platform that the next generation version of this car will also have. Still, soft damping can disguise an ultimate lack of chassis sophistication, and it's this approach that you'll feel almost immediately when you set off on your test drive. 
Uh, rather refreshingly, no attempt at all has been made here to provide a dynamic Fiesta-style driving experience. Uh, instead, the suspension has more compliance than you'll find with rival Super Minis, and the result here is that things like potholes and sleeping policemen will bother you far less than they usually would. It's almost enough for uh, small but subtle changes to the way that you go about driving. I mean, in this C3, you don't have to anticipate to avoid poorly surfaced stretches of road. You simply drive over them as if they really didn't exist. The downside to this is predictable, though extra body lean through the corners. There's certainly more of that than you'll get with obvious rivals. And when you're dealing with this, it doesn't help that uh, there isn't a great deal of feedback from the steering. Uh, stay with it though and you'll find that there is actually rather more grip and traction on offer than you might think. Pushing on through the turns uh, simply requires you to adjust to this Citroen's more idiosyncratic style. But you're not going to want to do that unless you absolutely have to. The C3 isn't that kind of car. Predictably, it's at its happiest in town, uh, not only because of the ride quality, but also because of the light, agile feel, which is complemented by a tight 10.7 metre turning circle. Things aren't quite so good on the highway. Here, the lack of a tall sixth ratio for the manual gearbox with the base petrol variant makes the buzzy engine note a little bit wearing. Tire and wind noise, though, are no more intrusive than you'd find in rivals. Beneath the bonnet, this third generation model continues with the petrol engines that back in 2016 were carried over from final versions of this model's second generation predecessor, which means that as ever with a C3, the bulk of the range is built around an efficient PSA group, 1.2 litre, three cylinder petrol PureTech unit, developing either 83 HP in normally aspirated form or 110 horsepower if, as is the case here, it's been fitted out with a turbocharger. Unless you're really on a tight budget, we would try to give the entry level 83 BHP power plant a swerve. Uh, you really have to rev it to make any sort of meaningful progress, and that doesn't do much for refinement or for efficiency. The rest to 62 time is a leisurely 15.9 seconds, and the top speed is pegged at 105 miles an hour. It's a real pity that the 110 bhp PureTech engine isn't more affordable because, as we've been finding over the last few days, it really is a sweet little unit. The turbo nearly doubles this little power plant's pulling power, and the result is that overtaking moves, which would be white knuckle maneuvers in the entry level model, can be safely completed without a thought. The 62 miles an hour sprint occupies a much more acceptable 10.5 seconds en route to 123 miles an hour and you get a sixth speed for the manual gearbox, although the cube-like shifter has an annoyingly long throw and a rather vague feel. If you want an automatic transmission alternative, then this top PureTech engine is the only unit in the range that can provide it, uh, the EAT6 setup in question being a proper full auto. There is still a blue HDI diesel option too, but only one now, the brand's usual 1.5 litre, 100 HP, Blue HDI 100 unit, which only a very small proportion of C3 customers will want. It's a pity because it is quite a sweet little unit. It wafts you around frugally on an easy wave of torque and makes 62 miles an hour in 11.3 seconds en route to 117 mph. At last, Citroen models are starting to look unique and different once more, which is just as well here because stylistic design is now the number one reason for purchasing in the Super Mini segment. According to the brand, 34% of customers prioritise it as opposed to 22% on average in the market. This third generation C3 sold well in its original form because it's cheeky, friendly looks cater to that trend and in the absence of it being able to uh, re-engineer anything of substance for this revised version, Citroen has embellished that demeanour with enough visual personalisation options to make this the most customizable small hatch in the segment. 
We'll get to that, but we'll start here at the front, necessarily so, because it's only really from this perspective that you'd notice anything very different about the updated version of this car. From here, uh, if you happen to own the original version of this third generation version, you might pick up that Citroen has tried to give the facelifted model a bolder, raised look, supposed to accentuate your perception of the height of the bonnet and to add a bit of the crossover vibe. Uh, the size of the bold central air intake, which sits below the brand's trademark two-tier light structure, helps with that. And as before, just above, chrome strips extend from the upper daytime running lights to the centre of the bonnet, where they meet to form the classic double chevron badge. Differences with this updated car lie in the adoption across the range of full LED headlights into which the lower chrome bar extends to give the front end something of the style of the brand's latest C4 hatch. A touch of personalization lies with the way that these lower fog lights are housed in mouldings which can be color coordinated with the door mirrors and the roof. Ah uh, yes, personalization. It's really this updated third generation C3 model's calling card. At a time when other brands in this class, notably Ford, Seat and Renault, are streamlining customization options on their super minis in a bid to cut manufacturing costs, Citroen has gone the other way. Apparently there are now no fewer than 97 exterior paint and styling combinations four colour packs and four roof colours. Uh, we've got the top in emerald here, but you can also have it in red, white or onyx black. With the original version of this Mark III model, you had to stretch to a pricey trim level or spend a bit on options to get the full effect of all of this. But now, virtually whatever kind of C3 you decide on, it'll stand out in the street. That's courtesy of signature styling features like the black windscreen and B pillars and the upper door sections that work with the little strip in the rear buttress to create the illusion of a floating roof. Plus there are flared arches which house wheels of either 16 or 17 inches in size. We've got the 17 inch vector style rims here. Perhaps most notably, you still get the biggest talking point, the side air bumps, which can be had with red, emerald or white coloured inserts, and which you can do without if you don't like them. Uh, the air bump seems as if it will prove to be a short-lived Citroen styling fad. It's already been ditched on the brand's latest C4 hatch, but it's still very much in evidence here. On all variants, these three airfield capsules at the bottom of the doors have been redesigned as part of this facelift. Uh, these raised thermoplastic polyurethane mouldings, uh, they're there to act as a defence mechanism against everyday dents and dings caused to your side panels by things like uh, supermarket trolleys or somebody else's car door perhaps. Indeed, Citroen reckons that you could scrape a shopping trolley right down the side of a C3 and the air bumps would save it from damage. Do bear in mind though that uh, protection from a head-on hit depends on the stray trolley hitting the air bump spot on. Not much is different at the rear where the crossover cues continue, uh, most notably this full width black plastic lower bumper with its raised protective corner sections. Uh, the upper part of the bumper is finished in body colour and extends up to the light clusters, finished in a 3D design, supposed to give them extra depth. Otherwise, the tailgate's fairly conventional with a large Citroen badge in the centre and a subtle roof spoiler which integrates a high-level third brake lamp. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, which in this case isn't particularly sophisticated. Now, unlike its Peugeot 208 and Vauxhall Corsa PSA Group Super Mini Cousins, which get the conglomerate's latest electrified CMP underpinnings, this C3 has to soldier on with the old tech PF1 platform, which was essentially carried over from the second generation model of 2009. Time to take a seat inside. Now, some of the visual changes made to this revised model borrow cues from the brand's recent C-Experience Motor Show concept car, which we're told has also influenced the upgraded cabin. So let's take a look. Now, don't worry, you don't have to have it like this. Uh, like that concept car, top versions of this C3 can now be had with this lightwood trimmed 
Techwood ambiance package. Uh, it's supposed Citroen hopes to give the cabin something of a Swedish feel. In our view, light wood trimming rarely works in small affordable cars and if you agree, then you'll want to switch to the alternative emerald ambiance interior pack that uses darker colours and leather effect dash inlays. Either way, the design of this interior is anything but dull. Uh, these designer luggage themed overstitched door pulls, for example, the retro style instrument dial graphics, uh, the intricately fashioned chrome trimmed vents, the door bins with their unusual contrast coloured interiors. There's even a reverse air bump theme happening on the doors and the speaker grills. It all attempts to continue the cheery demeanour that was established before you got in. Anyway, we ought to cover off what's different here, or what's different on this top spec model anyway, which gets these cosseting advanced comfort seats. Now they're optional with mid-range trim. Citroen says they're supposed to feel like an armchair. Well, we wouldn't go quite that far, but they are certainly an improvement on the generally unsupportive chairs, which uh, inexpensive small hatches tend usually to be fitted out with. Uh, they're created using thickened fabric, and special foam that can be up to 15 millimeters thick. And the seats are also fitted out with lumbar support and an armrest. The other main difference with this revised model applies to all variants, changes to this center dash seven inch color touchscreen, which now includes both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, so you can easily use your favorite apps on board. This monitor has now been enhanced with a glossier appearance uh, and a little rib at the bottom of the display here onto which you can rest your hand uh, while you're using it. It also includes a six speaker DAB radio and Bluetooth, but if you want more, then there's this sophisticated Citroen Connect nav setup that's standard with top trim and optional with the mid-spec model. And with this, you get navigation, uh, voice control, TomTom Tom live traffic updates, and a three year subscription to Speedcam which includes visual and sound reporting of speed cameras and danger zones before you reach them. Anything this screen can't tell you will be found in the instrument cluster that you view through this three-spoke wheel, where a small central screen, which amongst other things can display speed digitally, is flanked by conventional analog dials. A premium build quality feel won't have been amongst your priorities in choosing this car, and sure enough, scratchy plastics abound, but it does all seem to have been reasonably well screwed together, and there's plenty of seat and wheel adjustability. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now the falling roof line means that you have to watch your head on entry, but these wide opening doors compensate a little for that. Once you're inside, it's quickly evident that this isn't one of the more spacious super minis in the segment. Now, Citroen thinks that uh, rear leg space here puts this C3 among the class leaders. We wouldn't agree. The room on offer will be fine for kids, of course, but adults stuck behind reasonably tall compatriots up front may well struggle a little when it comes to a room for their legs and knees. As usual, in a car of this class, you can forget being able to uh, seat three adults back here in any degree of real comfort. And that's something that's further restricted, in this case, by the height of the central transmission tunnel. Talking of restrictions, taller adults will find headroom at something of a premium too. But then, how often is it really necessary to transport burly adults for any real distance in a super mini? Almost never. For the role that this car will be typically asked to play in an average family, what's provided here will, for most buyers, be probably quite sufficient. And to be fair to Citroen, the designers have freed up two centimetres more shoulder room than was offered by the previous generation model. Plus, uh, the shape and the positioning of the front seats gives rear seat folk a good view forward. Practicalities include ice fixed child seat fastenings, uh, coat hooks, no grab handles though, a central cup holder and smaller versions of the contrast coloured door bins we saw up front. You want to get these uh, mat pockets in the seat backs with top spec trim, which does seem a bit mean. And on some variants you have to manually wind the windows up back here. That seems all a bit yesteryear. Last but not least, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, lift the tailgate 
and after the relative restrictions of the rear seat, it's something of a surprise to find that the 300 litre space provided here is one of the larger cargo bays in the Super Mini segment. There might be a slight issue getting stuff in though, thanks to this high loading lip and a slight restriction in the opening aperture, thanks to the funky tail light design. Uh, because there's no adjustable boot floor option, there is quite a drop from the bumper sill to the luggage bed too. What's available here will be enough for a decent sized suitcase, but you will have to pack quite cleverly uh, to squeeze in overnight bags beside it. On the plus side, there are no significant boot area intrusions, uh, so stacking your various bags ought to be quite simple. Uh, disappointingly, there are no tie-down points here uh, or bag hooks either. Uh, under this floor, we have uh, a space saver spare wheel here that takes up all the available space. But unless you've stumped up for this top spec trim, you'll have to pay your dealer extra for that. Uh, to extend the space to push forward the 60-40 split folding backrest, uh, though with the chairs tipped forward, there's quite a step in the load floor. Still, the 922 litre capacity freed up should be quite sufficient for the needs of most owners. Now's the time to get down to brass tacks and find out what the improved version of this C3 costs and what you'll get for the money. Now the bottom line here is that this is still one of the more affordable super minis that you could choose, uh, even though prices have risen quite a lot since we last tested this Mark III model back in 2017. Then pricing began at around £11,000. At the time of this test, in early 2021, the starting figure was around 14000 there are four trim levels, uh, C-Series, Sense, Shine, and this top Shine Plus variant. As before, the range is based around this single five-door body style, but as we'll explain later, there are now even more options when it comes to customising it. If possible, you're probably going to want to avoid the two entry-level C-Series and Sense variants because they only come with budget trim and they have to be had with the base normally aspirated 83 horsepower version of the PureTech petrol engine, which is why most C3 folk begin their perusal of the lineup with a mid-range Shine model. That's a trim level that gives you a choice of all the available power plants and uh, which requires a starting spend of at least £16,000. From this more realistic starting point, if you want a bit more power than the base 83 horsepower petrol engine can offer, you could spend nearly £3,000 more on the single diesel power plant available. That's the usual PSA group Blue HDI 100 unit. But you're more likely to want to trade up to the PureTech 110 turbo three-cylinder petrol engine that we've been trying here. Now this costs around £1,300 more than the base unit and it offers the option of E86 automatic transmission for around £1,200 more. A word on where the C3 sits in Citroen's own lineup before we take a look at the competition. Now it's been price positioned midway between the little C1 city car, uh, which costs around £2,500 less, and the C3 Aircross small SUV, which costs around £2,500 more. OK then, what about rivals? Now even though this Citroen shares its engines with its PSA group Super Mini Cousins, the Peugeot 208 and the Vauxhall Corsa, those two models ride on a far more modern floor plan than this C3 and the C3 won't get that until its next generation. So you'd expect it to be a good bit cheaper. And by and large, that's how it turns out. Now, if you're looking at the base 83 horsepower petrol version of this car, an equivalent base petrol Peugeot 208 would cost around £3,500 more or around £1,300 more with either the petrol turbo or the diesel engine. With a Vauxhall Corsa at the time of this test, uh, Britain's best-selling car, it'd be closer to 4,500 if you compared to the cheapest petrol versions of both models. Yes, really. And with either the petrol turbo or the diesel engine, a Corsa would list at around 1,500 pounds or so more. If you're choosing between these three PSO Group models, those are figures that really might give you pause for thought. 
What about other key super mini sector contenders? Well, there's Ford's Fiesta and VW's Polo, of course. At the time of this test, the cheapest base petrol versions of those two listed at around £3,000 more than a base petrol C3. But most customers will want the little turbo petrol units that compare with the PureTech 110 power plant that we've been trying here. So let's compare against that instead. Now, when we checked the prices prior to this film, a Fiesta 1-litre EcoBoost and a Polo 1-litre TSI both listed at around £400 more than the cheapest C3 PureTech 110. But the cheapest C3 PureTech 110 is much better equipped than either the Ford or the VW. The kind of mid-range Fiesta EcoBoost or Polo TSI you'd need to match this Citroen spec would probably cost around £1,600 or so more, and it'd still give you around 15 horsepower less. Other likely super mini contenders that you might consider get closer to this Citroen's pricing. Uh, 90 or 100 HP versions of the Mazda 2 or the Renault Clio actually undercut the price of a C3 PureTech 110 by a few hundred. But again, you've got the issue of less power and more money being needed for equipment parity. Anyway, neither the Mazda nor the Renault can give you an entry-level model for anything like £14,000. And something like a Seat Ibiza is way off. One of those actually costs more than a Polo. Super Mini is like the Kia Rio, uh, Nissan's Micra and Skoda's Fabia get much closer to C3 pricing in this segment. They cost around about the same as this Citroen, but they fail to offer this uh, French contender's infectious visual charisma. Other rivals you might consider have become pricier than a typical C3 customer will want to countenance because they non-negotiably deliver various degrees of engine electrification. I'm talking about cars like the Hyundai i20, the Toyota Yaris or the Honda Jazz. Um, others like the MG3 or the Dacia Sandero, they'll probably just feel too cheap and bargain basement for typical C3 folk. If having considered all that, you conclude it is a C3 that you really want, you're going to need to know just how generous Citroen has been with the standard specification. So let's see. Uh, we're not really sure why you'd choose Sense Trim because uh, even though it costs around a thousand pounds more than C Series spec, it offers less kit. Uh, Sense spec lacks the 16 inch alloy wheels, the black contrast roof, the rear parking sensors, uh, the dark tinted rear windows, and the auto headlamps and wipers, which you'd get on a C Series C3. So, Sense uh, spec is obviously there for heavily discounted fleet orders, and private customers can safely ignore it. Across the range for this revised model, Citroen has added in LED headlights and front fog lamps, plus a front armrest for the more thickly padded advanced comfort seats. And whichever of the two base trim levels is applicable, you'll find that it comes with uh, air conditioning, cruise control with a speed limiter, a height adjustable driver seat and an alarm. Media, that's taken care of by a central seven inch capacitive touchscreen, the base Citroen Connect radio package. Now that incorporates a six speaker DAB audio tuner, USB connection and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, there is also the brand's My Citroen app, which via your smartphone could give you access to vehicle data such as driving range, parking location, mileage and servicing intervals. If you want a bit more, or as I mentioned earlier, you need access to a wider range of options and engines, then you'll be starting your perusal of the C3 lineup for mid-range shine trim, as many customers do. Now, shine spec includes, of course, uh, everything that you already get with base C-series spec, but changes the matrix-style diamond-cut alloy wheels of that entry variant to smarter helix-style rims. Plus, with the C3 Shine, you get a few extra cabin touches. Uh, there's a storage space underneath the touchscreen with a rubber mat. Uh, there are map reading lights, a stitched gear shift gator, and a rear wiper, which automatically engages when you select reverse. Plus, it is only from this level in the range uh, that you get a choice of roof colors at no extra cost. For a bit of luxury though, you'll need to stretch to the top Shine Plus trim level that we're trying today. Uh, that's recognizable by the larger 17 inch vector style alloy wheels, gloss black B pillars and tinted tailgate glass. There are two really significant cabin additions here too. The first being uh, Citroen's more supportive advanced comfort front seats, 
which are fitted out with lumbar support and an armrest too. And they're created using thickened fabric and special foam that can be up to 15 millimetres thick. Uh, there's also the more sophisticated Citroen Connect nav setup for the 7-inch fascia central infotainment screen. Uh, now that includes navigation, voice control, uh, TomTom live traffic updates and a three-year subscription to Speedcam. Now that includes visual and sound reporting of speed cameras and danger zones before you reach them. With Shine Plus spec, the feel of the interior is lifted by stitched leather trim for the steering wheel, uh, the handbrake and the gear lever and satin chrome bezels for the instrument gauges. Plus you get seat back pockets, uh, an electrochrome auto dimming rear view mirror and a space saver spare wheel. Once you've chosen the trim level of your C3, you can really go to town in specifying the exterior and cabin finish that you'd really like. Uh, with the addition of four fresh paint colours, one extra roof shade option and one fresh colour pack option, this revised model can now apparently offer up to 97 colour and trim combinations. That includes seven exterior colours, Elixir Red and this particular car's spring blue finish, joining Perla Nera Black, Cumulus Grey, Platinum Grey, Polar White and Soft Sand, the latter being the only one that you won't have to pay any extra for. Right, let's move on to the roof. There's also four bitone colours for this top. Uh, this car's emerald blue roof joining red, opal white and onyx black finishes. Note that the C-Series variant only comes with the onyx black roof and that with the Sensepec version, the different roof colours cost extra. Uh, and we'll finish with the need for a splash of extra colour uh, now so that you can colour coordinate the front fog lamps and the air bump panels. Four colour packs are offered, emerald blue as here, uh, that joins white, black and red options. Also new with this revised model is the opportunity to add roof decals in red, techwood or emerald. There's much less choice when it comes to interior trimming. All you get with C-Series, Sense or Shine spec C3s is the standard ambiance pack, which doesn't really bring the cabin to life at all. With Shine spec, you get the option of the Techwood ambiance, which is standard with top spec Shine Plus trim. Uh, that's what we've been trying here. Now this gives you an apparently uh, Scandinavian inspired wood effect dashboard inlay, and that's combined with the light colored upper seat trim. On top Shine Plus models, you can, at no extra cost, replace that with a perhaps more tasteful emerald ambiance interior trim pack. Now that uh, instead delivers contrasting dark colours with colourful touches, uh, 3D mesh, technical textile seat trim and a black leather effect dashboard inlay. Right, let's take a look at options. Uh, perhaps the most notable one is the feature that, that the original 2016 launch of this Mark III model was one of the C3's key talking points, the connected cam Citroen package. With that, you get an integrated camera with a 128 gigabyte memory, which is positioned in front of the rear view mirror housing, giving the lens a 120 degree view of what's ahead of the car. Now you can use this to take fun pictures, which via a dedicated app, can be stored or uploaded to social media sites. Plus the camera also acts as a dash cam which would automatically save video footage 30 seconds before and one minute after a collision. Now this can be used as evidence to your insurer that you weren't at fault and it uses GPS satellite tracking to pinpoint the location and time of any event. As for other more common options, well, unless you choose this top spec level of trim, you'd be wise to pay extra for a space saver spare wheel. Rear parking sensors, they can be added into sense spec. And across the range, you can add carpet mats, a smartphone holder for the dash top, roof crossbars, and a tow bar. Front parking sensors can be had with top Shine Plus spec. On to safety, this C3 won't get a 5 star rating from Euro NCAP until it standardises autonomous braking. Uh, Mid-range Shine spec get this as a £350 option, Citroen calls it active safety brake, only this top Shine Plus derivative includes it as standard. In both cases this feature comes as part of what Citroen calls its safety pack 2, which also includes driver attention alert, which warns you if drowsiness is detected, a collision risk alert, which alerts you to an impending impact, and also intelligent beam headlights, which automatically dip themselves for you at night. 
Disappointingly, on Sense and Shine variants, you also have to pay extra for the Citroen Connect Box Emergency Assistance System, uh, which will automatically alert the emergency services to your GPS location if the airbags go off in an accident. With a Top Shine Plus model, uh, if you pay extra for front parking sensors, you'll also get blind spot monitoring thrown in, and now that will warn you if you're just about to pull out dangerously in front of another vehicle. Having said all of that, let's focus on the safety systems that you do get fitted across the range as standard. Uh, there is a lane departure warning system which alerts you at, if at speed the car starts wandering over the lane delineating lines. Uh, then there's a coffee break alert feature which reminds you to take a break on long journeys, uh, say after two hours at average speeds of over 40 miles an hour. You might also not expect a car of this price to provide a standard speed recognition and speed warning feature which uh, pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays on the dash. The recorded figures can then easily be set into the standard cruise control speed limiter meaning that in theory at least you need never be zapped by a speed camera ever again. Otherwise, the standard safety tally is pretty much as you'd expect it to be on a modern Super Mini. So every C3 comes with twin front side and curtain airbags, ice fix charge seat mounts and hill start assist, which stops the car from roaring backwards as you pull away on inclines. The Citroen C3 has always been reasonably efficient, firstly because it uses a very frugal set of PSA Group PureTech and Blue HDI engines, and secondly because it's usually been lighter than the class norm. Uh, today the base petrol variant tips the scales at 1,098 kilos, which does still make it one of the lighter super minis you could choose. And that's quite impressive given that this car rides on a relatively clunky PF1 platform that dates back to the 21st century's first decade. So how much difference does all that engine technology and weight optimized construction make to the actual WLTP rated fuel and CO2 figures that this car can achieve? Well let's see, uh, the two PureTech three cylinder 1.2 litre petrol engines both achieve very similar readings up to 51.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 130 grams per kilometre of CO2 the normally aspirated 83 horsepower unit and up to 50.1 mpg and up to 129 grams per kilometer for the turbo 110 horsepower power plant that we're trying here. That is competitive but it's some way off the cutting edge class standard. Uh, to give you some perspective, a rival Ford Fiesta 1 litre EcoBoost 95 horsepower unit uh, manages 55.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 116 grams per kilometer of CO2. For completion, let's tell you if you choose this 1.2 litre, 110 horsepower variant with E86 automatic transmission, the readings we just quoted will fall slightly to 49.4 mpg and 137 grams per kilometre. Predictably, this car's diesel figures also look pretty good. Expect up to 67 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 117 grams per kilometre of CO2 from the 1.5 litre Blue HDI 100 model. It's not class leading, but it's certainly right up there. All the engines now come with the brand stop and start system fitted as standard, and every C3 in the range has a gear efficiency indicator, which tells the driver which is the best cog to be in to use the least fuel. Keep an eye on this and drive with frugality as a priority and you should be able to eke out an impressive range from the 45 litre fuel tank, uh, around 600 miles from a PureTech petrol unit and up to 800 from one of the diesels. So how have the PSA Group engineers been able to achieve such a strong efficiency showing uh, with the engines across the C3 range? Well, with the PureTech petrol units, uh, the answer lies in reduced weight and a 30% reduction in mechanical losses due to friction. Switch your attention to Citroen's Blue HDI technology and the answer lies in a clever three-step after-treatment system that's designed to better eliminate the four nasty pollutants that diesel units usually put out, namely unburnt hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulates. Now the first stage sees the unwanted hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide elements converted into harmless water and carbon dioxide. 
In the second stage, that nasty nitrogen oxide gets converted into water too via a selective catalytic reduction process using a urea and water mixture called AdBlue, although you will need to get that mixture topped up every 12,500 miles. And finally, in the third step, a particulate emissions filter eliminates virtually all particulates at a stroke. Enough on engine efficiency, what about other financial considerations? Well, regular service intervals come around every 16,000 miles or 12 months, depending on which comes around sooner. Uh, for many super mini owners, that will mean a visit to the dealer uh, once a year, and there are plenty of Citroen outlets to choose from, so you should never be too far from one. So you can budget ahead, the French maker offers its Citroen maintenance scheme, and that lets you pay either a one-off fee or monthly instalments to cover the cost of the routine upkeep of your car for as long as three years and 35,000 miles. Every C3 comes with a three year and 60,000 mile warranty and there's also Europe wide breakdown assistance included from you for the first year you own the car. Looking at the longer term, you'll also have a 12 year guarantee against rust and 36 months cover for any paintwork defects, although that doesn't include stone chips and other wear and tear damage. On to insurance, where the groupings are a touch higher than those of typically less efficient rivals. Uh, they vary quite a lot depending on trim. Mid-range with the base 83 HP petrol engine, shine spec, that's rated at group 12E, and the C-Series at 13E, but with its extra safety features, this top shine plus variant reduces that to group 80. Your insurance costs rise quite a lot with the 1.2 litre, 110 horsepower turbo petrol engine to Group 21A with Shine Spec uh, and that falls to 16E with Shine Plus trim. With the Blue HDI 100 diesel, you're looking at Group 22A for Shine Spec and that falls to Group 19A with Shine Plus trim. Lastly, whether you're leasing your C3 or buying it outright with uh, your own hard earned cash, you'll want to know what it's going to be worth when you come to move it on. Uh, that means looking at residual values, of course, and this third generation of Citroen Super Mini performs much better than its predecessors. Independent experts reckon that after the usual industry standard three year, 30,000 mile ownership period, a typical C3 C Series model will still be worth 7,100 pounds or 52% of its original asking price. That's a very strong result for Citroen. It's better than a Fiesta or a Vauxhall Corsa, and it's not far off a VW Polo. What do you really want from a Super Mini? Definitive driving dynamics, uh, the latest in engine electrification, premium brand quality, a supremely spacious cabin perhaps. Well, if so, look beyond this Citroen. If though you want a car with a little joie de vivre, personalizable to the point where you'll really feel it's yours, then we think this C3 is a car you may well like very much indeed, especially in this improved form. Okay, some of the things that make it different might seem slightly contrived. Do you really need a choice of 97 exterior paint and styling combinations, four color packs and four roof colors when you're choosing a super mini? That's debatable. Certainly the days seem to be long gone when Citroen pioneered groundbreaking engineering revolutions like air suspension and swiveling headlights. These days, its most successful product sets itself apart with plastic air bump panels on the doors and the option of sticking a dash cam camera onto the rear view mirror. Still, Citroen is at least once again trying to set its products apart in the way that they look and feel, which is refreshing after decades of the brand serving up rebadged Peugeots. Inevitably, you are going to have to spend some money to get the full effect, but so tightly has this car been priced that for most potential customers, there'll be plenty of scope to do that. And if any of these folk are wavering, but they like this C3 soft ride, this revised model's more assertive front end, it's improved infotainment, and on the top models, it's advanced comfort seats, uh, that might seal the deal Citroen's way. Of course, there'll be lots of people who just won't get what this C3 is trying to be. After all, there isn't really any need for crossover cues on a Super Mini. You can probably survive a trip to the supermarket without the protection of air bump side panels. And will your friends 
really want to see uh, your connected cam pictures of your journey to the gym on their Twitter feeds? Probably not. If you're tempted to take this perspective, uh, then you'd probably be far better off uh, considering another contender in this class. Uh, a super mini that might well be better to drive and rather more spacious inside than this one. But also a car that might well feel bland and boring after experience with this Citroen. All of which leaves us, well, where? From an objective point of view, this C3 isn't the best car in the class. Subjectively though, you could easily argue that there's nothing in this segment to touch it. It all depends on how you view the automotive world. We think that this C3 makes it a brighter place. <laughs>